Okay, and here we are, Picklebilly Presents. Um, I'm Picklebilly Jan, and today we are lucky to have Steve Taylor of Digital Spatula. And, uh, you know, I think like with Pickleball, we're all, we've all been blessed to meet just extraordinary people who are, who have their talents and their capabilities and whether it's on the pickleball court or off. So this is just more of that for me. Um, and I know that people know your work. I mean, they, they know it, but they may not know it's you. I'm sure there's many people who know your work, but it's, it's really great to have you here because a lot of the people in our community get to see and enjoy your work. And so now we get to hear from you ourselves. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I love the community. I love working in the industry and uh, meeting people is one of my favorite things. And when people come up and say, you're Steve Taylor, I'm like, yeah, and they're like, we love your work. That means uh, so much to me and it's very encouraging to have uh, people uh, respond to the stuff that I make. That's really the ultimate goal is to just make people's lives a little brighter when they see what I do. Yeah. and. You know, so I'm wondering about your inclination to uh, photography. You're really creating art. Uh, so was there something I, I wanted to hear about, like even growing up, was there a penchant that you had for color, for design, for any little inclination that you'd be doing what you're doing now, looking back? Well, that's a great question. Um, I was a musician growing up. I went to high school for the arts for music, but I knew I didn't want to do that because I probably would end up flipping hamburgers my whole life at McDonald's. And so um, um, I got an opportunity when I was a sophomore in high school to work on a cable TV show. And I really fell in the love of the idea of video production, all parts of it, shooting, editing, uh, producing, directing, um, lighting, just all of it. And so I decided that was the field I was going into. And I think my skill set, um, my half technical and half creative, I'm not great at either, but my certain skill set and interests um, helped me um, invest heavily into video editing. So that's where I spent the majority of my uh, early years in my pickleball career, or not pickleball, in my video career, uh, coming out of college, even before college, when I was in high school, I started a, a live TV show to showcase all the artists from my high school. So every Monday, wow. night, every Monday night, we would have a different type of artists on the cable TV show, whether it's a dancer, an actor, a singer, even a visual artist. So um, that allowed me to combine my passions and really learn a lot about video. So when I time, time came to college, I already had a lot of experience. Unfortunately, I went to a school that didn't really have a lot of great teachers, but my goal was to just get out and get into the industry. So I graduated co college in 90 and jumped right in and started my own business in uh, 91. Um, I'm kind of a uh, free spirit and I, I have trouble working for other people. So um, I like the freedom of uh, schedules and freedom to work on the jobs I want to work on. So I had trouble working for someone initially. So I said, I'm just going to start on my own and see where it goes. And uh, it's been a great ride. Yeah. Okay. But you know, but going back to, okay. So first of all, you went to the school of the arts. Mm -hmm. Is that like fame? Like That's exactly what it was. There were people dancing and singing in the hallways and on the tables. It was exactly like the show. Wow. And were you a, uh, you, did you uh, play an instrument? Did, were you a singer? Yeah. I was a, initially a trumpet player, and then I got into uh, vocals and theory and composition. And then uh, once I graduated um, high school, I got into keyboards. And so I've done a lot of uh, writing and arranging over the years. Some of my videos of me playing have made it on the internet, and people are like, wow, you do that too. So it's kind of fun for people to see another side of what I do. Yeah. And I imagine that, you know, when you were doing that TV show, you really probably got that feel for what looks good and how to present things. And, you know, it's like a training. It was a training camp. Yeah. I mean, just like pickleball, you got to put in the hours. You can't, you can learn it theoretically, but you got to put in the hours and really get real world experience. I've never had anybody ask where I went to school for, for video. They all said, can I see what you've done? And yeah. so uh, what's on the screen is literally a result of all the time spent learning, making mistakes, finding out what works, finding out what doesn't, having mentors. Um, so you just got to go out and do it. And just like a pickleball, you got to go out and do it. You got to see what works, see what doesn't, play with higher level people um, yeah. and drill and learn your craft. And so that's true of anything in life. Yeah. Well, um, 
so I, I know you shared with me uh, the cover of the Pickleball magazine. And so we're going to look at that. And uh, like I asked, you know, we kind of went over this, but I'd like to hear your, you know, what are you, what were you thinking here? How did you, you arrange it? Um, so let me pull that up right now. We'll share that. And so uh, they can still hear us, but there's, there it is on the screen. So yep. we've got Ben Johns. So I was asked uh, by uh, Pickleball Magazine um, and the owners of Pickleball Magazine, Wayne and Lisa Dollard, to um, come to the U.S. Open and shoot for them over the whole time, which was like eight or nine days. Um, they had specific things that they wanted me to shoot, make sure I captured every bracket of the pros because um, they were going to be doing a big article and they needed shots, you know. Um, they, there was multiple photographers there. So here's the hit. Here's the thing about my history with Pickleball Magazine. I've known Wayne forever since he started it. And I've always been dreaming of getting a cover picture and I've tried over and over again. And this is the first time in five years, five or six years that I landed one. So I was super excited to get the email saying we're using your photo. It's not the best photo that I took there, but the thing is, yeah. uh, Ben won everything. And so you got to put him on the cover. What can you say? And they did a great job of integrating the layout, the colors of the title. You know, uh, Ben and Colin are wearing a nice little orange kind of combination there. So they really used use that uh, for the colors, for the text. So yeah. they did a great job of laying that out. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you've even got the green on his shoes and then you've got the green in the background. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it really comes together. It's a huge honor, huge, huge honor. And I definitely see it as one of the highlights of my career. Um, well, we could look at the other, uh, pictures there. Let's see here. I've got, I'm learning how to navigate, uh, how to do this. Let's see here. Yeah. yeah while you're doing okay. that, oh, there we go. They did a, um, they did basically a nine page photo essay and there was some really nice write-ups by, uh, Morgan Evans, one of my business partners. He's a great yeah. writer, very funny guy. Yeah. Um, so anyways, they took, uh, they, they used a lot of my photos and I was shooting along with Bruce Young from, uh, Arizona, and he's another great photographer. So they used uh, some of my photos, some of his to fill out this photo essay. And they did a really great job of, of overlapping the photos and doing some great Photoshop work to make it very interesting. It's just so vibrant. The colors are just uh, amazing. Let's see here. Let me see if I can uh, scroll down here. So this is some more of the um, all the different photos. You've got uh, Callie and Catherine. That was, a, that was a huge upset. Their win in the gold medal match was amazing to be right there on the front lines. I'm a, I'm oh. a tournament junkie. I'm a pro pickleball junkie. And so yeah. being, I had a chair right there on the front lines the entire week. So it was oh awesome. Oh, my to, gosh. To <laughs> I mean, look at Irina's face. Look at that, like, determination. And, and she's just – it looks off balance, but you know she's going to get that shot, and she's there. She's as, she's as intense as any player in the game. Yeah. And uh, my job is to capture that thrill, that athleticism, that intensity, uh, yeah. the joy of winning. Uh, I'm about emotion. Now, when someone sees a picture of mine, I want them to feel what was going on on the court right there. And yeah. sometimes I do a great job, sometimes not not as good. But uh, I really want to capture that uh, that feeling of being right there next to them. Yeah, I, yeah, that that comes across. I mean, look at their face they're working so hard simone in bed and she's like okay you're gonna get it he's like okay i think i will <laughs> yeah Ben's like i got this don't worry i got this <laughs> and then uh yeah uh, the, Newmans, the Newmans yeah. are as intense they're so so good um, yeah it's funny riley's riley asked me why do you why do you always take pictures of me when my face is all scrunched up? I'm like, <laughs> that's what you look like when you hit the ball. He is a, sorry, this is just reality. Yeah, I can't change reality. <laughs> right, right. That's, hey, that's what I say when my husband takes my pictures. Like, honey, I'm supposed to look good when you're done. It's yeah, like, well, it, is, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and they did that. They did that split age thing where a senior played with a regular pro, and there's Dane playing with Ben. Um, oh yeah. yeah. I think there's uh, I think there's Cammy McGregor playing with Irina. Uh, so fun to see those mixed up teams. Oh, interesting. So they took um, a senior pro and then um, one of the the younger pros. And there's uh, uh, Steve Kennedy from Florida 
uh, winning the gold with Catherine Peronto, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. And then they, and then they had uh, wheelchair pickleball, and that was amazing. Those people yeah. could really play really, really well. They moved around so expertly on those wheelchairs, and uh, yeah. honored to be able to, to capture that. That is so exciting because think about it. You're having to navigate probably with the one hand to move mm -hmm. yourself around and then, oh yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Very, very exciting. Uh, so let's do this here. Let's um, remove this. And um, so I'm going to get the, um, we're going to move on to the motion cool. and the, or what, let's see, we call it photography and then videography. Is that what yeah, we said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I love the one you, uh, this is the Lucy Kovalova. So, uh, so before we do this, I'll just tell people that um, I do photo and video and photo came along much later. Uh, we can talk about how I got into the video thing, but uh, um, how I got into pickleball, but photos came along after I was already producing a bunch of videos in pickleball. So it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. So videos, yeah. Videos came first. You would think it'd be the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. You would. Cause the gear is cheaper. Anybody can take a photo. Um, but, uh, yeah, I discovered the still photo thing and fell in love with it big time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is, uh, Lucy's and, um, can, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, it is 30 seconds. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were, uh, Fila called me and said, Hey, can we hire you to take photos and video? I'm like, of course. Yeah. Uh, and they were really, uh, keen on featuring their first player, Lucy, um, and the great outfits that she wears from them and also the shoes. So the shoes are pretty heavily, um, featured in a lot of the photos and videos that we do, but, uh, it's been awesome working with Lucy. She's a great brand ambassador for them and she yeah. wins a lot. And she's fun on camera. She really knows how to, to be a fun person on camera. Yeah. I love the uh, bright pit. Those shoes look so white and perfect. Mm -hmm. And then, they, yeah, and the way you cut out with the camera going from the shoe to the, and then like the power shots. And um, I, is, I do you, li you like having those vibrant colors, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, they pop, they're eye pleasing. Uh, they bring energy to the screen. And uh, she dresses very colorfully, um, but elegantly. So uh, yeah, it works great for video. And uh, you can see I use a lot of slow-mo too. That's kind of one of my signature looks. It's just a super slow-mo thing. Um, yeah. Partly because it shows the elegance of pickleball and being an athlete. But also uh, when you put that next to a full-speed video, the full-speed video looks a lot more powerful and fast. So it's a nice uh, kind of um, variety of speeds for um, highlight reels and commercials and things. Okay, so sometimes you're hired by brands to promote theirs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you also did an advertisement for the 2020 Nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very energetic and diverse. Uh, let's take a look and then get your thoughts about that as sure. well. Uh, this is going along pretty smoothly <laughs> by switching. I'm very happy about that. You're doing great. Okay. I'll, I'll hire you for the next gig. <laughs> okay. Okay. And this is on Vimeo. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Obviously, those dates have changed. That was last year's okay. commercial. So uh, this year, it's December 4th, I think. 
But so, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. The commercial that never aired because it got canceled. Oh, okay. Can anyone not? Can anyone resist pickleball after seeing that? I think not. Nationals is U.S. Open and Nationals are very special events. They're very different, um, yeah. but they're both big parties. And yeah. the best players in the world, you know, best pickleball in the world. You see everybody you know. Uh, there's great fun to be had, food and drink and rec yeah. play in the nights. And um, yeah. Nationals is special because it's such a big place and yeah. uh, it's beautiful and the stands and everything. U.S. Open's a lot more uh, intimate. So anyways, I love going to both those places. Uh, now I'm the official photographer and vide videographer for Nationals. And this year I'm uh, part of the streaming team for Nationals. We're going to be streaming three courts. So I work alongside Boxcar Productions to do streaming with uh, APP and USA Pickleball's National Championship Series uh, and Bainbridge Cup and a few other things. But uh, – yeah, Nationals is a special special week for sure. Nine days, yeah. nine days. And you really convey that. Like you've got the people with their drinks mm -hmm. and then Sarah Ansbury's in the booth and then the winning and then the whole crowd and the colors. and. Yeah, my job my job is not just to capture the spectacular play, which we all know about, but it's yeah. to capture the event, the vibe of the event, the funness of the event. So it makes yeah. it very uh, attractive to people that have never been. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and also like in doing these interviews, like I've interviewed pros, but I love our community. So, mm -hmm. you know, like what you're doing is huge and it's integral and it's awesome. Uh, but I also want to interview just people in communities and what they're doing. And mm -hmm. anyway, just the whole plethora. Yeah, um, that's my favorite thing is the people that I meet and see and get to know and then yeah. see them again at another event. And uh, just the social interactions are so fun. Yeah. I'm going to nationals for the first time this year. I can't wait. I, I'm, I just know it's going to be spectacular. And, and for all the reasons that you said. Yes. You're going to love it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so that one was an advertisement for nationals. And then uh, we have one. This is uh, for Tyson McGuffin, a PPA Scottsdale reel. What was the focus of that or, or the purpose of this one? So Tyson, uh, everybody probably knows is one of the best um, uh, marketers of his brand. There is <laughs> the TM yeah. brand is huge. Um, yeah. And Tyson and I have gotten to know each other uh, throughout the years as he's come up through the ranks. And he uh, started calling me and saying, Hey, if we're going to be at a tournament together, uh, um, take pictures for me. And, uh, I'll hire you to take pictures and uh, shoot a highlight video. And so uh, this is one of those weeks, uh, PPA uh, in, in Scottsdale. I don't remember which month it was. It was kind of maybe maybe the spring. Um, and so he was there. And so I just kind of capture him throughout the week when he's playing singles, men's doubles, and mixed and kind of build a little highlight reel. Okay. And so really, so when we look at this, we are seeing him as a brand. Mm -hmm. So, and so what does that mean? We're looking at his clothes. We're looking at the power. We're looking at his personality, his interaction with the public, his representation of all the uh, sponsors that attach their name to him, like yeah. Selkirk and, you know, all those guys. Um, so okay. really it's about uh, getting to know the person and then trusting them with the decisions that he makes for his paddles and stuff. And saying yeah. I want to, I want to uh, play well. I want to be like him. So if he uses Selkirk, I'm going to use Selkirk. Yeah, I know that's why I've noticed in my community. I use Selkirk, and everyone just seems to keep buying more of those paddles. No, I uh, <laughs> I love <represent laughs> Selkirk as well. <laughs> so uh, I, I I play with the Selkirk paddle, uh, yeah. usually uh, Vanguard, but uh, it's a great company, and uh, I I'm very happy to wear their. Uh, brand when I go work. I mean, I'm really visible. I'm a gigantic billboard. I'm almost six and a half feet tall. So I'm a big guy. So Wait, is that I, your paddle? The uh, Invicta? My, my older paddle. I use the Vanguard now. But this one's just laying around my office. You know how it is. After you've been playing for a couple of years, you got paddles laying everywhere. Oh my so, God. My, my, my Invicta's right there. Oh, nice. Well, the Invicta is what uh, Tyson plays with. So that's good. Oh. Let's go. Let's get the ball. <laughs> Purple though. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's another thing that connects me and Tyson is just uh, Selkirk. 
they yeah. uh, they purchased photo licensing for me and videos and stuff. So yeah, um, it's fun to work with them. They're a, really a great company to work for. Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, everybody, you are going to enjoy this. Here we go. Wow. Wow. It was skipping there a little bit, but uh, oh. yeah, it's fun. Oh. He's such a dynamic player. I love watching him play and capturing what he does. Yeah. He seems to have a uh, very um, compact t uh, tightness to him. Like he doesn't, he's not all extended, you know, yeah, very much in front of him. A lot of control. He moves his feet so well. He gets in position really well. Yeah. Well, you, my friend, are just going to continue to get busier. No, <laughs> I've been, I've, yeah, the, I've been on the road a lot this year and it's been a blast. I'm glad to be home for a couple of months. Um, but next year it's going to be crazy with the APP and PPA schedules and U S open oh. nationals. It's just, uh, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it all, <laughs> but I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, so this is, so is it different doing the live streaming because you started off with um, you know, videos and then you did, it sounds like photography and then now you're doing live streaming. So is that a whole different ball of wax? It is. I mean, I'm thankful that, uh, among the crew that I work with live streaming, they handle the, uh, minute by minute stuff on the court. And I, uh, my, I have a great job and my job is to get content and edit it. So I'll shoot video, I'll create graphics, I'll shoot stills that get integrated into the streaming. So I still got my creative responsibilities and they give yeah. me a lot of freedom to capture what I want. And I do, uh, I'll take my drone out first thing in the morning and I'll get some drone shots and I'll do some uh, graphics on top of those. And uh, so I just enjoy using all the tools of my trade to create uh, interesting stuff that they use on the stream itself. It really is a lovely blend mm -hmm. what you do because you need to have the technical capability to execute mm -hmm. all of this. But then to have that vision of the, you know, how it looks and how yeah. you're going to present it. There's definitely the uh, two-sided left, right, left brain, right brain, creative versus technical. I'm not great at either, but being able to blend the two is. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so um, how about your pickleball game? How is, so you, you said that, uh, so should we talk about our favorite sport? Uh, I'm always up for talking about pickleball. Is my, that okay? wife is tired, my wife is tired of hearing about it. All my friends are tired of hearing about it, but oh well, that's what oh. I do. <laughs> and isn't it so interesting that when you're talking pickleball, it can go on and on and on? I mean, uh, when I'm sitting around with pickleballers, I mean, we, we could fill a whole day with pickleball and never be bored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, yeah, my husband plays, but uh, he's got a knee injury right now, but. Anyway, he he's not uh, as crazy about it as I am. But but you play. You said you uh, play twenty hours a week, and then you said you drill six hours a week. And yeah, you were very specific always, about that. Uh, well, that's always the goal. I mean, it's they're more like goals, and I hit them many weeks. I mean, the the last six months I've been on the road a lot, so I'm not hitting the numbers I, I normally like to do. Um, but I mean, some weeks I'll play twenty five, thirty hours, and I'll definitely get into six hours of drilling a week. Um, so for me, drilling is way more important for my uh, improvement than games are. Uh, games are super fun, um, but drilling is where I'm going to really improve. 
Okay, so um, if you want to be effective on the court, how do you focus your drilling and to translate into that success? What do you do? Well, um, here, uh, the number one thing is, uh, what are they doing at the next level that I'm not doing? Um, so, uh, over the last nine months, I've been working very hard on resets and playing defense in the transition area. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you're going to save a lot of points if you can stay alive in the transition area. If you can reset that ball and get up to the kitchen, uh, because your drops might not be great or whatever, uh, you need to stay alive. So that's, uh, and, and uh, resetting the ball is literally the only way you're going to learn is drilling that you're not going to yeah. do enough of it in the game to get that feel that repetitive nature of it. So you have to have people that are just going to, uh, a drilling partner that's going to hit balls at you over and over and over again. You're trying to drop those in the kitchen. You're trying to either take them out of the air or take them off the short hop. Um, you got to play low. Um, I work with Morgan Evans. He's my coach. Um, and, uh, he, uh, is very specific about things. When we have a lesson, he, he covers three areas and, uh, and then I take those back to my drilling time. So uh, those might be, uh, moving my feet on, uh, dinks to get it over to the outside dinks. Um, they might be, um, playing defense in the transition zone. They might be, uh, working on drives. Um, but, uh, it's great to have people around me that I work with that, uh, know how to, um, work on things and I can take those back and work on them with my drilling partners. Yeah. Okay. So you're standing in the transition zone and then your drilling partner is, uh, shooting balls at you. And then your job is just to soften it and to reset. And then do they, uh, and then you just keep going well, until it becomes, here's the problem with that drill is that if I'm successful, they can't reattack. So it's hard for them to keep the drill going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, ideally in a real game, you hit a good reset and you're up to the kitchen. Uh, so, but in the drill, I'm staying there in the transition area, but if I hit a good drop, they can't reattack. So they really can't keep me in the drill this week. I was at Newport beach and I was watching Morgan Evans drill or warm up with Marcin Rodspetsky, one of the greatest teams of all time. And Morgan was standing in the kitchen while Marcin was, uh, doing resets. I'm like, how brilliant is that? That way they can keep attacking you. So you know whether it's going to be a good drop or not, but they're standing in the kitchen just hitting the balls back at your feet. So that's the that's the solution to drilling um, with good resets. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're standing in the kitchen where they're not supposed to be, but what advantage does that give them by standing in the kitchen and doing that? Well, they can take the ball out of the air because if I hit a good drop shot and they're behind the kitchen line, they can't oh, reach. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So it keeps the ball aggressive. It keeps yes. it so you can keep going. Exactly. Oh. It's lovely. That was mind blown for me. And I've been in this sport for a long time and done a lot of drilling and training videos. Yeah. I'm like, that is so valuable. Yes, it is. Us. Morgan and I, Morgan and I are going to do a quick tip on it. We actually co-own uh, coach me pickleball, which is an online yeah. online subscription training site. I produce the videos and he's the teacher. So coach me pickleball, uh, dot com, uh, yeah. And we offer a seven day trial free. Uh, anyways, yeah. um, we do quick tips and I told him we have to do a quick tip on that because this will revolutionize people's drilling for this particular skill. Yeah, no, that, that I've never heard that. And this is what we're all right. We're looking for those little jewels, mm -hmm. that will, <laughs> yes. little nuggets. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, the thing I've been working on is the aggressive third shot drop. So, and this was Sarah Ansbury and it's, um, you know, so you can do a nice little floater and have it land right over the net or it can be more aggressive. So it's a little bit flatter and then you're pushing mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can sit there. I like doing like a hundred drop shots. Well, let's just go. Like get it automated, make it regular. That's going to be I so good. That. Yeah. That's going to be so good for your game to have that as a tool. If so, if the team doesn't return the ball very well, like if it comes back to you easy, then that gives you opportunity to set up and be more offensive with your third shot drop. Yeah. I mean, your drives are important, but I just think having that and then it's practicing ball control and, yeah, um, you know, that's so, awesome. Yeah. I call it a driven drop, like uh, a driven drop. Cause it's got that uh, more uh, linear shape to it and it's going to hit around the, around the kitchen line at their feet. And especially if you yeah. go to the corners, they're going to have trouble with that. Especially if they're yeah. back, they're off their uh, back, backhand. Foot. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, uh, so then when you go and play in the regular game, um, are you 
playing to win or do you also use that as an opportunity to drill and practice shots? Yes. And yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it depends on who's, who my partner is and uh, who's on the other side and what the vibe is for the day. Um, I play a couple times a week with these four or five guys and um, I'm working on things. I'm trying to implement things, but I'm trying to win also. So to me, yeah. they kind of go alongside. If I'm playing with low level players and uh, I can, I have no problem playing with low level players. I'm working yeah. on things. I'm working on my drop shot. I'm working on setting up things like Ernie's. Um, so the thing about playing with high level players is you're going to get feedback on what's working or not. You're going to know right away whether it was good or bad because they're going to punish you if you don't do it right or if it's a bad choice. So I like yeah. the uh, playing with good players is uh, really good for your game because it gives you instant feedback on your choices. Yeah. Well, you know, I told you I played with Greg Whitfield this morning <clears throat> and him and his partner, Janet. And, you know, we're all, you know, they're, they're much more accomplished players than we are. But what I noticed they do is that I told him, I go, you guys are like a vice and the vice is slowly squishing us <laughs> and they just keep putting pressure mm -hmm. and it's incremental pressure, whether mm -hmm. it's, a little to your backhand, or we're going to alternate our shots. It's a drive versus a, a drop mm -hmm. versus a, a little lob or, and it's like constant pressure yeah. until eventually the other side just cracks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's so fun. That's fun to watch that ratchet up each hit, you know, each uh, part of the rally. Yeah. Yeah. You, see, you know, you see the pros, people are on their, they're on their heels and you're like, this, this is not going to end well unless they can really reset the, the, the rally. Um, but you can see people kind of just get down the drain. They're going farther and farther down the drain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and also, so do you have a uh, partner who you play with? <laughs> um, I have I have a regular partner. He lives in uh, Scottsdale. Um, he's been out with a shoulder surgery, um, but we're back at it for fall brawl uh, in the fall. And I'm excited to get back on the court with him. He has, he has a court at his house. So whenever I go to Phoenix, I stay with him and we play a bunch. And so uh, he's big yeah. like me. So you can imagine yeah. two big guys just kind of coming at you at the net. It's he's got Scary. a great, yeah, he's got a great ground yeah, stroke. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times it's about shake and bake for me. It's like uh, you take the ground, you take the third shot, and I'm going to go get in their face and make them really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so it works for you guys. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, very all right. Well, um, I. I'm just um, thankful that you uh, had the time after everything that you're doing uh, to come here and to be with us. And um, if um, if people would like to hire you, and you, your phone's just going to start ringing off the hook even more. It is Digital Spatula. Now, how did you come up with that name, Digital Spatula? Why, why the spatula? Well, um, I always saw uh, videos as a, kind of final dish and all the ingredients were the video, the graphics, the voiceover, the music, all those are ingredients and the final dish is the final video. So I always thought it as a kitchen concept. When I came uh, into the industry, there was already a big company in LA called Digital Kitchen. They're gone. So I've outlasted them, but uh, <laughs> I, could, I couldn't use their name. So I needed a funny utensil and uh, my wife was at UCLA and in the, in the sorority she was at, her nickname was spatula. I'm like, that's perfect. That's a funny word. Uh, people will remember it. Uh, it's a great shape. And so, uh, yeah, so that's how it came about. And uh, people remember it. You know, it's, it's unforgettable. I love it. <laughs> well, you have done you've done so many things and I can only imagine what's next, but I think with your creativity, you're just going to be riding that wave, uh, you know, for new oh. horizons. Thanks. Thanks for the encouragement. I love what I do. I get a lot of opportunities and I just uh, want to keep doing it. I, I'm living the dream. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. So if, well, if people want to see my work uh, on, on Instagram, I'm Digspat, D-I-G-S-P-A-T. So Digspat oh, okay. on Instagram. Oh, okay. oh, that'd be cool. And on Facebook, I'm Steve Taylor. You have to just find me. Uh, okay. Digital Spatula. Um and uh, you can go to digitalspatula.com, although that's mostly my corporate work. Yeah. So, um, no, I love. Oh, so all your pictures are on Instagram. That'd be really great. No, it's, it's like, it's just a joy. It's like, it's looking at artwork. It is, it's oh, artwork. Uh, you know, we have the best players in the world. Um, we have a small court so we can be really intimate with them. It's super athletic, super powerful. 
And uh, some of the moves are the most interesting moves in any sport, um, like Ernie's and such. And so it's just a super joy for me to get to be on the court and to capture some of that stuff. Yeah. And the personality and the emotions. And yeah. 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 No, it, it's all there. Well, I, thank you, I, my I, friend. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll tell you two of my favorite photographs I've taken recently. One was at yeah. U.S. Open, and it was of Adam – Adam Stone and Deco Bar. Deco Bar was going up to hit a. Um, someone lobbed them, and Deco was going up skying to hit an over, overhead. And Adam Stone is crouching underneath him, oh. um, <laughs> he's looking up. He's looking at him, going, "Oh no!" And it's a Give great away. image, just a lucky capture. You can see that on my Instagram from U.S. Open. And then recently, I got a shot of Rob Cassidy, <laughs> Rob Cassidy uh, going almost fully vertical, trying to get a ball in singles, uh, and. Uh, He's a very dynamic player, one of the, my favorite players to shoot. So uh, both those photos are on uh, on Instagram. Check them out. You know what? Is there a possibility because uh, – so this video will be on Picklebilly. Could you post those pictures underneath it since sure. we're talking about it now and then everyone sure. can see those too? I'd be glad to. That would be awesome. Yeah. And uh, Hey, well, if you, I'm going to end our broadcast, but if – if you could just hang out for a second and then I'll um, sh show you how I send the links and stuff like that. Thanks for having and, me, Jan. Really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice to meet you. And I will uh, see you in person in December. Um, Indian Wells. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Bye everybody. Have a great day.